Greetings, Damien. Hello. And Damien, can you can you hear me? We had a bit of sound issue. Can you hear me fine? Rock and roll. Thank you. Oh, aren't you famous on the internet? I was following you on LinkedIn. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> all all uh, inflation and and uh, smoke screens. I I don't think so. By the way, you have the best profile picture. I went. I know him. See Damien. I'm, he's my friend. I know Damien. See, um, you're the best, Damien. Thanks, Tara. <laughs> so Queen Jess has joined us. The legendary Doug that Damien, just so you know, he's just found out he got a scholarship at CDU. We are so proud of you, Doug. So welcome to Right Club. I think this is your first Right Club, actually, Doug. So welcome to it. Lorraine, Queen Lorraine, the person that changed our lives is back. Sue Charlton, who is changing the world. Uh, she is changing the world. She's changing the world through regional health. We love you, Sue. Good choice of a striped top, Sue. I like his stripes a lot. Uh, and we're all just competing with Josh, as you can see. Josh has got some serious clothing, like I'm a serious scholar clothes. See, Kylie, went, eh, eh, eh. Or what do you think of Bond villain? You think like a Bond, if you're looking like a Bond villain, do you think, Carl's? Right, fantastic. Carl's in. Beautiful Emma has joined us from very early in Western Australia. Ruth. The light of our lives is with us. Genius, 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 Ruth, genius, Ruth, genius. Gay is in the house. We love you. Julie is in the house, who has just been accepted to join CDU's program this week. Congratulations to Ruth. Queen Best is in the house. Beautiful Susan has joined us. And the legendary Paul, who maybe is moving locations at this juncture and is writing up a storm on sound. So, colleagues, welcome to Write Club. And we haven't done this in a while, have we, Carl? What's the first rule of Write Club? Right. 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 It's it's quite frightening when like most of the screens just go and say nothing. <laughs> like three go. Ah! Um, so th thank you all, everybody. That That's woken me up. My goodness me, bits of me are alive that weren't alive this morning. That's great. So colleagues, you have 29 minutes of fabulousness. Let's do this. Let's do something amazing. Write something. Change the world. And that's just Damien. Party on, girl.
last minute colleagues. And we are concluded, colleagues. Oh, 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 that was exciting. And I can see Sajidian. How are you, mate? Great to see you. Hello. You are so precious to us. So welcome to Right Club, darling. We'll return to you in a second. What, what we do is everyone's just written for 30 minutes. And now I ask them what they wrote on. So get ready for this. So we will return to you. But we are so thrilled to see you. And what a wonderful office you have. Thank you so much for providing all of the facilities. Thank you. Oh, you're amazing. So we'll come back to short. I just didn't want to frighten you um, because yeah. obviously Ruth is frightening. Good morning, Ruth. Now, Ruth, would you like to tell us what, what you wrote on, you legendary staunch human you? Um, so I technically wasn't writing this morning, but I do need some moral support from everybody uh, because I was just preparing my to submit my first first author manuscript but I can't bring myself to press the submit button. <laughs> okay, so let's go there, Ruth. So, so ready to go? So, yeah. yeah. So, so darling, darling, this is exciting. So, yep. you are a brilliant human being. I've, I've watched you for one hour. That was the best hour that I've spent in twenty twenty three. Hashtag no pressure. What are you? What are you? What are you frightened of, Ruth? Oh, I don't know. What if what if there's a terrible mistake in it that I haven't found? It just I'm just yeah. Angel, the one thing I can guarantee is reviewer two will find that error. So don't <laughs> worry about it. And if there's no error there, they'll find one. So Darlin, Darlin, jump and the net will appear. This is a moment of our lives. Ruth, press submit. Done. <laughs> now, Ruth, and look, can I say that's the first time I've seen Ruth smile. I've known her for six years. I have not, not seen true. Ruth. I smile all the time. <laughs> so, well, you're staunch with me, Ruth. You are staunch with me. Often I think you are Dean, and then you probably are. I think I'm in a dystopic nightmare, and Ruth is actually the Dean and a better one than I am. <laughs> Ruth, congratulations. We are all so damn proud of you. Well done. A moment in life, darling. Yeah. Thanks for the moral support, everyone. Okay. And look, it, it, it may be time for what was the what was the drink of choice we talked about in Digital Office House? Might be time for a PIMS. Bit of a PIMS, okay. bit of a PIMS moment, I think. Uh, and speaking of the most fashionable human we know, Damien, uh th thank you for sparing the time to be with us. Uh to ah. not not be speaking with your LinkedIn community. So so Damien, what were you what were you writing on, Damien? Uh, I'm up to my third chapter of my thesis, which is all about television production. So I'm doing all the definitional work of like, what is production? What are the stages of production? What does production look like in Australia? What does it look like in relation to queer representation? So I'm in the midst of that. So lots of reading um, and lots of basics to set up the like complicated stuff I want to talk about later. And see, Damien, good on you for doing that work because that's proper, and I'll use the phrase, that's proper cultural industries work. And it's not done often enough. So well done, you. And once you've got the cultural industries in place, you can fly from there. Yeah, it's the plan. <laughs> okay. Thank you for sharing your fabulousness with us today. I live vicariously through you. And, of course, Kylie is the better part of myself. Good good, good morning. Good morning, Kylie. We've shared 2023 together. Uh, good morning. Yes. Good, good morning, Kylie. What were you writing on, Kylie? Well, um, I have the big loser letter on my forehead because I got rejected from my last article, but that's okay. I'm doing the I'll update. Take no pressure, Ruth. Ruth, breathe, breathe, Ruth, breathe. <laughs> Shaking breathe. it off and just doing the updates and slapping it back into another one. <laughs> so that's what I was doing, filling out the how to upload and 
making the changes and I'm just after this I will finish the and I'll do the upload button like Reese. So. so 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 this is this is the academic life. This is like not everybody likes you. Ruth, it's like being a 13-year-old girl trying to get a boyfriend, <laughs> right? Okay, that's what this is. Remember that? Remember that right? Yeah, you it is. ugly and then on the on the big date, you got a big pimple on your forehead. Remember this stuff? The guys have got no idea what I'm talking about. So you really love him, you love him, so you love him, and then you get a pimple on your forehead, so you look like you've got a unicorn horn. So that's the nature of this sort of publishing song. Michael Ruth so but Kyle's you've demonstrated for it okay okay yes. so someone goes nah what do you do just go up next and and it is Ruth like the Tara mentioned about reviewer two actually it, mine was reviewer one and from my first paper that actually got published um I reckon I've got the same two one is really nasty and I'm like yeah whatever and the other one is beautiful and very supportive and says that how I'm a key player in that area and I'm like oh I love you reviewer too but yeah you'll get one that's a complete pain in the ass so just take the learnings take the learnings oh that's on my bingo card for 2023 (laughs) too um Carlos can I say too I know this probably will not be helped and you'll like, like smash me to the curb as well but can I say the really edgy research often has a very difficult pathway through referees mm-hmm. because the innovation freaks them out. And and it is, that was the feedback around that I wasn't tailored enough for direct for engineering education. And I'm like, but it's, it is, it's old people's engineering education. You just might not see it as 19 year olds that come straight from school. So that's and very true. Carly, can I say summoning the physicist of our acquaintance, the idea that you're challenging engineering education, he would be applauding you and sending you PIMS by the gallon <laughs> at this point. I like my belief. <laughs> it's a dessert and a drinking one. Is it? <laughs> oh, like rock, rock on Christmas. And we'll, our, our, digital, our digital office hours and our right club for Christmas will be quite an event, can I say. But, Kylie, good on you, darling, and great modelling for Ruth as well, a great modelling for all of us. You're a legend. And, look, let's go to the other person that fires me up. Come on, Jess. Come on, Jess. What were you writing on, Jess? I don't think you want to hear. Come on, talk to me. Now, what's happened? What's happened, Jess? Okay, just to continue on with the analogy, I was talking this morning about the tree. Um, My tree just fell over. I thought I had, yeah. Anyway, so um, I was preparing my first publication and I thought I'd just rerun the systematic review just one last time to be sure, to be sure, to be sure. And someone published the exact same paper on the 21st of November. That was three days ago. So. That's cool. That's cool. It's cool. Is it? It doesn't yeah. feel very cool. Yeah, look, it's cool. Shit. No, no, but no, no, you're allowed to, darling. You're allowed to summon summon Sorry. multiple uh, bell train gods. That's fine. Uh, so, Jess, it's all right, darling. It happens. Um and, you know, all I'd say is this is perhaps why I don't do systematic reviews because the parameters are tight and they are very easy to replicate at speed. But, Jess, don't panic about that. That goes now in your thesis. It goes in your thesis. It won't be published. Come back to it in two years' time near the end of it. Add other variables to your parameters. Thanks for playing. At this juncture, Jess, I would go to the next chapter. Well, I think they're doing that. I haven't finished reading it. I was angry reading, so then I'd realised I hadn't actually been thinking about what they were writing. I was just thinking about how shit it was. Um, So then I'd have to start again. I need to just read it properly. But I think that someone's already doing this. Angel, they're not. All you do, trust me with this, and Kylie's going to help you with this, all you do is you have to change the parameters of your sock your significant original contribution to knowledge, Angel. So no one is mm-hmm. replicating it like this. Just go to the parameters, change the sock. We'll quickly go to Kylie and Gay because they're clearly straight in. They want to help you, Jess. Go, Kyle. Thanks, Bill. I was going to say a similar thing. I know there was a vlog a long time ago where you said a similar thing, Tara. Someone had gone through and it, they just it might have even been Sue that you just tweaked it to slightly change that lens so it is still significant but it's just a slightly different view than what they're using that so mm. i hope that explains but i know tara because i remember thinking that well if worse comes to worse and if anyone ever does my stuff i've just got to tweak the view of it 
In terms of positionality theory, mm -hmm. Jess, you'll just take a different facet of the lens, Angel. And sweetheart, if you want to send me both, I'll work on it on the weekend and let just a fresh set of eyes, your old Dean, just just see if I can create some differentiation between it for you. But Gabe, could there be sorry? Could there also be around if you had a time frame that you were doing the review in, Jess? Between the, I know mine was between ten years. Could you change that, or if you don't have years, put in a year, sort of thing. Hmm. Yeah, well, the thing was, the review was there was zero articles on it. Now there's one. And that was the basis of my paper, that there was no literature on this. Okay, so there's still one. one. So, yeah, there's, so Jess, there's still one. Not. Now there's one that's telling everyone there's no articles. I'm like, that's what I was writing. <laughs> Yeah. So in other words, you get to gain from this. So remember, what you can now do is do a scrag fight in the car park. There's now one, mate. There's now one and you're having a scraggy over. Come on, this is a scraggy. So this is about you and I getting this stuff done, mate. Let's do this. Let's take where are these where are these people from? Where are they from Finland? We can do a fin we can do a fin any day, mate. What are we where are they from? I'll, I'll follow uh, USA and Italy. Oh, I can take an Italian in the car park before lunch, mate. We don't fight worry. dirty, don't we, Tara? We, 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 we got them, mate. We got them. It's fine. It's fine, mate. Jess, darling, all we do is alter the parameters. But straight to Gay. Gay, help Jess. Okay, Jess, um, as an editor, I would say to you that if you gave five authors the same parameters to write a story or an article, they would write five completely different things. So what everybody else has been saying is you, your writing, your research, your take on it is unique. The fact that somebody else has done it doesn't matter. It feels dreadful for you right now. But your stuff is your stuff and is still a significant contribution. Work with it. I don't it. know. It's pretty good, Gay. They've done it better. No, nah, mate. No. Nah. Well, you you do it better because you can now insert your, their paper into your systematic review. Big holes in it. You you win. You win the internet, Jess. We got this. We, babe, babe. Honestly, relax with it, Angel. By the way, colleagues, and I just for a meta point here. This is always my critique with doing a systematic review rather than a literature review. Literature review gives you the flexibility. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'll just. But that's not what you need to hear, Jess. Jess, with a systematic review, with a systematic review, use Kylie's thing. Think about years. Think about geography. Think about the parameters. And worst case scenario, we add this one paper. We actually go back again, and you would have had to have done this in three years anyway to submit the thesis. We just do it now. Just also, okay. I had when I did my systematic review, I had three papers, and they didn't look exactly like at what I did, but looked at a component of it. So having papers out there that talk about what you're doing doesn't mean that they've done your stuff. You're, yeah, it's just your bit. Thank you, everyone. I really like Damien's advice to take the weekend. I think I need to read it without this angry lens. I want to like hunt that researcher down. <laughs> yeah. So look, Jess, maybe I should try connecting with them and collaborating and saying like, "What were you thinking?" That might be a nicer approach. Here, so, you're a nice person. Whereas you see, I take them out in the car park and go, "What were you thinking?" Right. So, so Jess, follow Damien because Damien's a sensible person. Um, so Damien, just take the weekend. Jess, darling, do send them to me if you want a second set of eyes to look at the two of them. Just take a breath. Mm -hmm. I have my big girly cup of coffee on Saturday morning, my big bucket of black, and let me just sit with them. And that might just give you a, a third gaze. Well, I don't think this is a disaster at all. Jess, I'm a goth. If I thought it was a disaster, I would tell you. I would drag us all into a PIMS nightmare and none of us would recover till Monday. I would tell you, we're, we're stuffed, Jess, we're stuffed. I'm actually going, this is cool. This is cool. You're fine. You're fine. Okay. Yep, I'm fine. You're fine. You're fine. Yep. We're with you, done. <laughs> Follow Damien's, follow Damien's advice because he's the grown-up in the room. And, and the other grown-up in the room is Josh. Uh, Josh, now, oh, gee, you're looking dapper today as well my god um so so jo josh you scholar and gentleman you what were you working on um i just wanted to say to jess too yeah having a pause is great i mean i i had the same thing happen to me where i thought i'd been scooped and you're just in shock right now and if you just sleep on it as with all things in life where you think it's unsolvable you'll see the the particulars the next day or in the next few days so yeah just have a rage today um and it will be okay <laughs> but yeah um 
in terms of what I was working on, um, kind of follows on from digital office hours. I'm looking at, I've got a data set from the, the International Journal of Doctoral Studies. And because they have author biographies at the end of everything, I've done, um, gone back to my quant days and done some bibliometrics looking at and tracking student authorship um, or PhD student authorship in doctoral education. So mapping um, how much are students contributing to um, the scholarship supervision to doctoral studies. Um, so I've got all those figures there. And then after our conversation with digital sales, I spent the time working on the introduction and getting that sorted. So, yeah. And, and brother, what have, what have you found? Obviously, we won't gazump anything, but are you finding students are involved, first author, second author, or are they just being used as data sets? A lot, there's a lot more than I was expecting overall. So out of about 880 instances of authorship, about 120 are um, PhD students at time publication. And that's an underestimation because there's many that have written recent PhD graduates. So they probably were writing it during the candidature. Um, so that really surprised me about, you know, one in one in six, one in seven um, are PhD students. And yeah, there there's differences over time as well. So it's increasing. Um, and there's also very distinct um, models of authorship that go on with it as well. So I've looked at authorship order, where they are, are they just sent between what goes on, who's corresponding. Um, yeah, it's interesting data. Right, darling, that's a paper in and of itself. Don't, don't bury that in something else. Do, no, no, no. Yeah, do yeah. that salami slice and that is unbelievable. Thank you. Oh, you're amazing, Josh. Well done. And look, Lorraine, Lorraine, I can see you're absolutely frantic there, mate. Oh, you all right? What's happened, Dale? What's happened? Oh, no, I just really feel for you, Jess. I really do. I just, you know, and just really want to validate, you know, that you're entitled to feel really angry and go out the back garden, get some ice cubes and throw them at a tree or something and, you know, jump up and down like a three-year-old and throw yourself on the bed and, you know, tears and snot, let it all go. And then dust yourself off and and take the really good advice that that's been given here. Uh, and if they're doing exactly what you're doing, isn't that plagiarism? How have they got your material? So it must be different, right? So, so firstly, that that's a good data point to say. <laughs> but also, Lorraine, the challenge with new areas in allied health, in particular, with systematic reviews, is they are new, and if the parameters are tight. Mm. But can I say, Lorraine, um, tears and snot, um, got Kylie, we're going to be going all afternoon on these memes, Kyle. Tears and snot, mate. And is this a whole bit of life, Lorraine, I've missed getting ice cubes and throwing them at a tree? Is oh, there... it's, yeah, some alternatives to self-harming behaviours. Oh, right. You know, yeah, so you, you just engage in different senses so you actually do feel something. So, But don't hold the ice cubes too long because they actually can burn. So, yeah, there's a number of little things you can do to... Right, right. Well, them. I don't know about everybody else, between between PIMS, tears and snot and throwing ice cubes at trees, I've got my weekend planned. So, Lorraine, what, what were you writing on du during that incredible 30 minutes? Wow. <laughs> so I went back, I went from top to down to the bottom. So I'm, I'm up to about 37,000-odd words now, my thesis. Oh, my Thank you, thank you. So, but it still feels quite bitsy. So, um, I I don't. It sort of comes off of our digital office hours, you know, like making sure that you feel like you're productive. And so, when I don't feel like I'm really productive, I try and do something just really small, even if it's just restructuring one little sentence. Um, or recording a chapter in a book so I can play it back to myself. I'll go for a walk. If I can't sit here and mentally focus, rather than trying to feel bad about it, beat myself up over it, I go, okay, what can I do? I'll record this chapter, I'll go for a walk, and I'll listen to it or find a podcast. But I do really find it helpful even to record your thesis yourself because I find at different times you hear different things depending on your own mood, the weather, what you know, whatever, your night's sleep, and you go, oh, actually, I think I could do a little bit better with that. That's, you know, so, yeah, voice recalled, go for a walk, be gentle, take care, do small bits. <laughs> and you big are, bits when you can. <laughs> you, what can I say? You are just, I, I just want to be you, Lorraine. And, <laughs> and you are just inspirational. One of the greatest students I ever taught was the wonderful Tiffany Lindell Knight. And her second last draft, she read out and recorded her entire thesis and listened to it while she was doing yoga. And she yeah. ended up with one, 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 straight through and the Vice-Chancellor's Award for Excellence. So the sonic... Wow. 
So the written to the sonic, the sonic to the written, that's how you create a magnificent thesis. Yeah. You are the best, Lorraine. Speaking about good sound, straight to good evening, Paul. Paul. Hello. What were you writing on, Paul? Um, I was I was continuing my uh, kind of writing up of uh, photography as a semiotic context to performance and performance art, performance design. Um, and I was looking specifically at the idea of performance photography, so taking photos of uh, performances, but looking at it as a um, photographing objects within performance as an operational reason. So someone backstage might take photos of a props table laid out and what that means semiotically uh, when, when capturing that. So we might take those photographs for a director to use like a relay baton again and again in other performances. But once you've, once you've framed that image, it has a semiotical position that actually might change its definition or might change its use in the next performance or the next iteration. So I'm kind of looking at that element of the semiotics of, of, of photography and performance and how when you zoom out of that, when you're taking photos of uh, scenery setups or, or stage positions or actor positions on stage for a documentary reason, for operational reasoning, when you go back and use them in the future, it's going to apply its functional specialism, its functional use uh, around what was actually photographed rather than its physical use within the space because the photograph will produce its own lens essentially so that's kind of what i was writing up so paul in terms of i'd be using the language of anchorage and de-anchorage uh in yeah. my sort of paradigm that is and of course that therefore is referent post-referent that's amazing yeah and it's looking at you know simple things uh it's kind of coming about that i think the article is going to be called around like but it's just a chair the idea that there is just a singular object that means nothing but actually it means everything because of the way it's documented or used has a semiotics uh, foundational kind of milestone and how we use that when we revive performance or when we look at performance again we'll be used in a completely different way because of the way it's been constructed because all photography is a construction it's not real Okay, well, Kyle has just gone, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I feel a lot smarter now. I think we all do. Paul, unbelievable. Middle of the night for Paul, as always. I'm quietly moving through as many people as I can. I want to talk to Mary. I am aware sort of the, there appears like there's been some Mary movement that we don't know about. But, Mary, are you well? And what were you writing on, Queen Mary? Uh, I was actually just making notes on a reading of a funny little obscure book about settlers that um, is going to be give me a bit of background on them. So I'm doing background work at the moment, but I'm also doing a paid internship, which is fantastic. Things are kind of turning around for me a bit as well. And just as an encouragement um, for a, a rejected article, I did have an article rejected that I worked on for nearly 18 months. Shortly after that, I presented on it at a conference because I'd already been accepted to present on it at a conference. And now they want it to be a chapter in a, uh, a book they're producing from the conference presentation. So don't be disheartened about rejections because I, what I've realised is that we're doing research, all of us are doing research in areas where we're really stretching knowledge about that area and people actually want our research. But you, it'll just take, sometimes it takes a while to find where that research is going to sit. You are, can we just, for Mary, can we just do, Mary, you are an amazing human being. And look, rejection, rejection shows you're on the right path. From my perspective, I might be sort of counterintuitive old goth on this, but if you, if you want people to agree with you, don't be an academic. Uh, this is, we're, we're in a fight here. We're in a fight for truth and knowledge and change. And people, people that maintain the status quo won't support us making those changes. So we will confront rejection, but as long as we dust ourselves off that ninth time and keep walking, we win, like Mary wins. Mary wins. That's brilliant, Mary. And look, the legendary Sajid, how are you, mate? It is great to see you. And no stress here. Just just tell us something, because obviously I've, I'm reading your things <laughs> on the weekend. I'm so excited. But tell us, what were you writing on during the 30 minutes, mate? Uh, I just started writing the first paper and um, 
I I enjoyed I enjoyed because I feel that is somebody just forcing me to start writing the first paper because I already finished analyzing and I just finished grappling with a big data set with too many variables and uh, I just used some new uh, well how can I say that's like a exploratory statistic approaches to find the most suitable or just most important features of the weightlifting movement in both uh, male and female. And uh, many, many researchers, they already reported, reported uh, some of these uh, parameters, but, you know, I just uh, use a gold standard method to capture the data and I'm using the new statistical methods, but I'm taking risks. I know that they might reject me, but I don't care. I don't care, honestly, because at least I'm just expressing myself and I'm just, just bringing my idea up with many people. I'm just saying that, okay, you can just look at the, look at this analyzing performance of athlete in this way. And uh, I'm not sure anyway, but just, just, it was just give it a try. But now I just started to write in the introduction and I wanted to just uh, highlight the approaches I used. And it's a bit tricky, but I'm sure that I'm going to finish it. <laughs> I, I am so excited. And of course, I've now been added to Saji's panel, which I'm terribly excited about. So we're looking at weightlifting team. And of course, I've done some work. I know it's come as a complete surprise to you not, but I've done work on weightlifting and sports science and physical education were part of the things I have done work on. So I'm going to be reading your thesis on the weekend and I'm terribly excited and it is a wonderful project, and I'm just thrilled to be part of the story, and we're thrilled to have you as part of it yeah. as well, darling. Thank you for accepting being on my panel. I'm so excited. Oh, I love a bit of weightlifting myself. Um, and, look, I'm sort of obsessed by this. I was always going to write, Kylie, on the strongman competitions. I've been quite obsessed by that. I'm too old to marry every person that's entered into a strongman competition, but... I will live vicariously through the weightlifting data sets that have been pro provided for me. So you're a legend, darling. And look, we'll finish off with the finisher. We'll finish off with the queen herself. We love her more than life. Dina, tell us about how fabulous you are and where we're at, girlfriend. Come on. So um, <clears throat> last last week, uh, I mentioned that I, I was uh, confused in um, threading the storyline. So... I got through it and um, now I'm really um, writing the essence and um, it's it's really, for me, um, it's wonderful how my data has allowed me to reflect on my life as well. So um, I, I hear the stories of people telling about probably what they think of normal life, but it, it when I feel down, and I look at these, um, and I hear again the di data set. It 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 makes me <laughs> it makes me want it to write again because um, now I'm doing a subsection on how faith builds caring and a sense of happiness in joining or being a member of um, um, KSB, the the volunteers, and um, the women that I met. So I, in one of the villages. Um, the the participant were, was like seven female and one male and um the women um that i met and i asked what motivated them to join ksb and there's there's one woman she's widowed she has three children and she's a vegetable seller and in indonesia um the normal like the minimum uh payment uh on that region is around two two 200 Australian dollars so you can imagine how limited uh, they must be but she said um, uh, uh, I my kids go to school uh, I go selling vegetable around with my bicycle and then but if um, the head of the KSB would tell me to go to a meeting because there's a meeting and we have to respond to disaster I would just uh, put my bike and just and just go to the meeting and I said so what about your job what about your kids and she said well um 
I believe that God would would repay me in other other way. And if I have a, a good intention, and then it will it will pay me back someday. And now she said that all her uh, children has graduated from senior high school so they're generally uh, the the education level is uh, senior high school and uh, one of her uh, uh, one of her daughter is a graduate in university and and the telling of these stories and reading it again <laughs> makes me feel uh, like whenever uh, I'm down in in uh, writing because I think that it's it's not um, finishing. <laughs> I have lots of things to write and it's, uh, I wanted to near the finish line, but it's slowly <laughs> like a snail. So in times of this, I just reflect back and see that um, they're doing things with happiness. So for me, telling them story, I should also do it with happiness in me. So these times when I need motivation, I just go back <laughs> go back to my data and 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 reread what people are telling me so i i'm more thankful <laughs> of what i i'm doing as a, a researcher so <laughs> dear dear friends i thank you for sharing this time with me i think dina has captured exactly the journey we were all meant to be on today jess that we carry these precious voices and views and humans with us and that is the gift of research. Jess, we're with you. Colleagues, we're with you. Dina, you rock. Saji, we are thrilled you've joined the family. See you all next week. Stay safe. Stay well. Much love, Jess. We got you, girlfriend. We got you. See you, beautiful. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you, calls.